welcome to the core connection i'm mira rubin here with you on enlightened world network and today's topic is the pearls of logic um we tend to revere logic as as um as a high state of being somehow um that that logic has more value than emotion and um it it, it should should be an interesting conversation to be talking about logic and emotion um and how there are some false premises that guide any kind of conversation about the the um supremacy of logic uh that that we uh institute in our culture but before we get started i want to say good morning good morning Rosalind. welcome so good to have you here with us this morning and welcome to everybody else who's joining us uh let's take a couple minutes to get present so let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it and imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop. And let all those sensations bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables us to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this conversation about logic, logic and emotion came up uh, yesterday. And I think it's, it's a really important and valuable thing to look at uh, how we operate in, in many cases, but this is one really brilliant or really um, explicit example of how we operate under false premises. So first of all, um, we have this belief that human beings can be logical, that uh, we can actually separate ourselves from emotion. First of all, that we, we believe that we can, first of all, and second of all, we believe somehow that that's a good thing that that emotion is a lesser state if we're emotional that it's a lesser state or that emotionality is a flaw somehow you know we're enculturated into that notion in so many ways you know stop being so emotional kind of thing right like uh emotion is a sign of weakness in our culture but let's look at or it has been in so many ways let's look at this idea of logic and separating ourselves from our emotions just the very fact of the matter trying to separate ourselves from our emotions the, the is a function that is fracturing our being fracturing ourselves, disconnecting ourselves from ourselves. There's an intelligence to our emotions in, in many, many cases, and it's energy and it's a communication from our body and being. And so when we separate ourselves from our emotions, we lose our, our 
North Star. We lose our compass. We lose our way. Um, and it's often through our emotions that we kind of have a, a compass for morality, for what's okay and what's not okay. You know, we can get a gut feeling we can that that allows us to know that something is out of alignment. How, if we separate ourselves from ourselves, from our emotions, how can we possibly find a path to alignment? And if we look at what, what um, kinds of things occur when we are being or trying to be logical, so to speak, and separating ourselves from our emotions, what can happen, what often can happen, is that we make deeply immoral decisions or decisions that have wide wide reaching ramifications that we don't account for. So one of the places that we can look is in business where people will, in the name of the bottom line of a company, for example, people will make all kinds of decisions that they justify strategically because they're taking emotion and connection and relatedness out of the picture and it allows them to do awful things like overwork people terribly or you know like um like um sweatshop kind of environments uh how can people justify this is because they're 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 maybe justifying it based on the bottom line of business. There's something about the way that we relate to business and money that we justify by saying things like it's only business. It's not personal. It's just business. Well, so what's happening there is that there's a fracturing. There's a fracturing of ourselves in such a way that we lose the ability to recognize the the human costs the environmental costs the the ramifications of what we do because we have a specific outcome in mind and anything that's in the way we is in the way that w- we we consider logically uh how to get from one place to another when we when we do that without our wholeness without a a deeper alignment the likelihood is that the decisions that are made are unbalanced in so many ways so that's that's this whole notion of um separating ourselves from our emotions to begin with and the thing is that we're operating under the premise that humans can be logical to begin with what we look what what we oftentimes consider logic uh is a what what actually happens is that we make a determination we we want some kind of result and then we justify it uh we find an argument to support that result and justify it and we think that that's logic just because we can make an argument to support something it's like on debating teams people are are given the task to argue for or against something and it doesn't really matter what their own feelings are 
right? What their own stance is, what their own beliefs are. The point is to create a, a cogent argument, right? So it becomes it becomes a war of words and and not not uh, a an argument that is um is whole in in it, because it's it's disconnected and so when we look we look at our culture it's typically women who are characterized as more emotional too emotional um and men who at least traditionally right men who are more logical and that that logic that disconnection from emotion is lauded as superior and and strong and emotionality is characterized as weak and this is something that we perpetuate because we're indoctrinated to it, men and women alike, where, where a certain level of emotionality uh, or being connected to our emotions, those are their signals, their communications from our body and being, the emotions to let us know, hey, something's awry here or something's wonderful here or or there's something that um, I get to work on because something got triggered or uh, the, the notion that it's somehow better to cut ourselves off from ourselves in this quote unquote logic uh, is is kind of a collective craziness that explains why there's uh, it explains at least part of the reason why there's such dysfunction in our culture because we have separated ourselves from ourselves let alone from each other and so when when we are disconnected that way, we can be capable of horrible things, destroying the environment, destroying other people, um, just doing, doing horrible things. And we justify those horrible things in the name of logic or reason or um personal personal gain oftentimes you know like one of the places that we see this we see this for instance in in battle strategies and we also see that the battle language is used in business so so commonly, right, where we are moving around people as if they're things. We're talking about casualties or um, the 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 cost of doing business. it's It's really quite remarkable. And it is founded in a patriarchal, domination kind of culture if we look at it because it is very gender it is a very gender based kind of prejudice right now i'm not saying that logic in and of itself is bad it's how we how we use and abuse it we can be integrated and use our our ability powers of deduction or or rationality in an integrated way 
with our emotions in wholeness in in a place of whole or from a place of wholeness that allows us to come to conclusions that are in greater alignment that are considering a uh, broader uh, having a broader reference point than than the cold calculated kind of logic that is so elevated in our culture um and if we look at the inherent sexism that is part of that assumption that logic or rationality is superior to emotionality or that emotionality is weakness and and rationality is strength if we look at that underlying dichotomy we can see that that it permeates so many different dimensions of our culture and it is an inherent sexism where even even we as women in many cases have adopted that same false premise. And so much is built upon this, this faulty foundation that no wonder the, the culture has, um, has the challenges that we face uh, because those premises typically don't get questioned they they just become the foundation assumption from which we then build and it's like building skyscrapers on quicksand ultimately uh, because we're separating ourselves from ourselves and we're separating ourselves from each other and we then criticize ourselves for being too emotional, for example, and and thereby we invalidate ourselves and our experience and our humanity. So I, I think I think it's very interesting. Uh, another conversation from yesterday, which was really, really fascinating, is that when the notion of slavery, the concept of slavery, this, this I haven't been able to research this myself, but this is what the conversation was. And, and I invite you to check into it for yourself if you're called to, but that the model for slavery uh, was modeled on women, the way that women were treated, where women had no right to vote, women had no right to property, women couldn't be, uh, couldn't sign contracts, et cetera, et cetera. And that that became the model for how to um how to structure slavery it's craziness i i want to research this but apparently um ruth bader ginsburg in her amicus brief in i believe 1972 made reference to this so, um again i haven't verified that but that's what I was made to understand yesterday so this I guess what we're talking about is domination and control structures um, and some of the foundational false premises that allow us to hold those structures in place where if 
if someone expresses emotionality, then it in our in our current culture it 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 um brands them as weak. Don't be so emotional. And so I think calling out some of these assumptions is really, really valuable because what happens is that there will be this in an argument or in a debate or in a conflict Oftentimes, the conflict itself is built on a foundational assumption that is faulty, where that is binary, that is um, polarized, and we talk about this a lot. It's it, and I recently experienced this in in a dispute that. I've I've mentioned to you with a company that I had contracted to help me build my business. And um, they were offering me one solution and only one solution that was unsatisfactory. And they were offering to tweak that solution because this solution is the way that things work, so to speak. And um, a friend characterized it like they said, "Well, we're here. Are we're giving you peas? You can have the peas boiled. You can have them sautéed. You can have them uh, mashed. You can have them in any number of ways." But and and I was saying, "I don't want peas. I want carrots." And they kept offering me peas, and this is because the foundational assumption of their argument was this is the way and that's kind of the the false premise that we're talking about is when everything is built on that foundation we we tend to not be able to entertain the notion of carrots when we're operating from the world of peas if that makes any sense um so oftentimes so for example um uh somebody once said to me you're so weird and rather than getting involved in a conversation about being weird or not being weird defending against it or whatever um i just challenged i said you say that like it's a bad thing, you know, like the challenging the foundational assumption. And rather than than being engaged in the superficial argument. So we've talked about the triad of um, the activating force and the restraining force and the reconciling force but and usually have spoken about it as like going up a level you know to a higher view to be able to see the bigger picture perspective wise but it also could be going down a level to see like where where are these things where is the foundation of that argument faulty Right. Where's the what are the assumptions that are driving that that polarity that maybe themselves are worthy of challenge? Uh, it's it's almost like the the question that uh, a police officer might ask somebody was, why did you kill your wife? But the, the person, first of all, didn't kill anybody. And second of all, wasn't married. You know, so the false premise is, is kind of this attack, but based on 
on a misperception to begin with. And so there are many places in our lives where we operate on assumptions, like we operate on the assumption that something is bad or something is good. And, um, or we might operate on the assumption that everybody's out to get you. So when you operate on that assumption, you can, you can validate that as in experience. But it's, what if it's not a valid assumption to begin with? So we get to, we get to look at um, these false premises and also just to circle back around this notion of logic um, is one of those false pre premises that we can be logical really, that we truly, truly can be purely logical, or that that's even a good thing, right? That's that's the other um, foundational assumption, because what, what we look at when we're talking about cold calculated logic is separating ourselves from ourselves and from, from the bigger picture. So um, I think that's it for this morning. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection, and I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as my Facebook page. And I invite you to please like and follow the YouTube channel for Enlightened World Network and for me, Mira Rubin, and the links are in the description. And as always, it is a gift uh, to be able to have the opportunity to muse and meander in our um, exploration of life and living and consciousness. So with much gratitude until next time, so much love.